All right, um, so JD here uh, is a amazing guy. He's worked with Watchman Monitoring for years, but he also has strong solutions. And, uh, and what are you talking to us about today? Uh, ZSH, we're taking you to the next level. That's right, I, I knew that, ZSH. So, so everybody a warm welcome. And thank you to Sean for a great presentation on Bash and, and scripting. So um, another thing I, I'll add on, on commenting, because it's, it's very important, is a lot of times I'll write my logic out and use that as the comments and then build my code around it. So that can kind of help figure out what I'm trying to do and then, and then go that way uh, for that. So uh, today um, I'm talking about uh, bashfully moving to ZSH. So a little play on words uh, here because, thank you, sir. Uh, can you reset that? Do we have the ability? Nope. No, it's not the right one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all right. I, I got it. We're we're good. All right. So, um, a little bit of of what we're talking about here is. Uh, today is, is what kind of inspired me uh, to go along these lines. Um, we're gonna talk about what a shell is uh, for that, um, a little bit of history and, and the Mac OS, and then we'll actually get into Z shell. So where Sean was talking a lot about scripting, I'm actually not going to talk about scripting. I'm gonna talk about the actual interactive shell. This is where I live uh, most of my day, uh, is just in terminal, banging, banging on the keyboard and getting stuff done. Trackpads and cursors uh, aren't, aren't all that fun uh, for me. I like, I like just keeping my fingers on, on the keys. Thank you, sir. So um, when Apple announced the beta for, for Catalina, this article showed up um, that they were basically saying you should use ZSH because that's gonna be the new default shell. So if you create a new user account on, on the machine, ZSH is now going to be that default shell. And then uh, uh, Sean had mentioned Armin uh, had, you know, started posting about this. Uh, he he uh, has a, a great blog and website called Scripting OS 10. He writes a lot of great uh, eBooks out there as well. Um, and then he started publishing all of these articles. He actually published a series of eight articles about moving to ZSH. This got me excited. I had played with ZSH for a while, um, but uh, hadn't really realized that it was, it was there. I mean, I, I use it on some of my Linux systems, um, but didn't really pay attention to the fact that it was there uh, on the Mac side of things. So uh, with that, um, he just gave a talk at Mac Sysadmins on ZSH. Wow. Um, so I want to make sure that that talk is out there. It's recorded. It's a video uh, that you can see. It is hopefully nothing like what I'm presenting here today uh, for this. Um, I'm going to make one little change here. Sorry about that. Um, so, uh, so not surprisingly, he talked about moving to ZSH as well. Um, my goal here is not to steal uh, from what he has produced, but really hopefully to, to give you some insight under this and, and uh, build on that and provide a little bit of history. So what is a shell? I hoped, I hoped you guys would give me a little bit more reaction. I know it's early and it's late. There's been you know, a long couple of days of conference. but um, So what are we talking about when we're talking about a shell? We're not talking about the company or uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, but um, what we are talking about uh, is um, the shell is what interprets and executes uh, user-defined commands um, and provides uh, command-based uh, abilities. So 
Uh, what that means for us is if I push the right button here, this decides to work here. All right, there we go. Now things are going to start to build, maybe. There we go. So what we have here uh, is we have uh, the kernel and the CPU memory and devices. So this is, this is the hardware, right? Um, and on top of that, we have commands, files, and the, and the operating system. And those all communicate with the kernel that is then talking to the hardware. Um, this together makes a computer, very simplistically. Uh, there's a lot more going on uh, than, than this nowadays. Uh, you know, you have T2 and all this other, other stuff. But, but essentially what we have sitting on top of that is uh, the ability to have scripts and a shell uh, communicate with the OS, with the files, with the available commands um, to allow us to execute uh, other commands, functions, um, and, and integrate or uh, interact uh, with that. So these are now able to talk to the computer um, and to each other, uh, and we can get, get a few things done. So if you want to see what shells are available on your system, uh, it's a very simple command in the terminal, cat uh, Etsy shells. Uh, when you do that, you'll, you'll actually get a little comment there that these are the list of uh, acceptable shells that you can uh, ch pass. So uh, what, the, what ch pass is, is the command that you would use to, to actually set your shell uh, for that. So you'll see there's, there's bash, there's c shell, there's k shell, uh, there's the, uh, the original born shell, uh, tc shell, and zsh or z shell. So, a little history uh, on this. Uh, Born Shell uh, came from Unix, um, and it was developed in 1977 by Stephen Born uh, at AT&T, and was introduced with uh, Unix uh, version 7. Um, C Shell was uh, brought to us as part of BSD, or the Berkeley Software Distribution. Uh, Bill Joy uh, wrote that as a graduate student. I, uh, in 1978. I can't imagine writing a shell for a graduate student project, but all right. Uh, these guys must have had a lot of time on their hands. They didn't have YouTube. Um, f five, years, uh, five years later, um, uh, TC Shell, uh, or 10X actually, was a, the, a popularized system from DEC, uh, uh, introduced um, file name and command completion. Uh, things and that that developed into uh, TC shell uh, for that, and they basically extended the C shell. C shell was the default for the Mac for for a long time, um, and it was based very much off the the C uh, programming language. Which who's programmed in C? Who likes programming in C? Yeah, exactly. One guy. Um, uh, it, it, it it was a struggle. So um, with that, um, uh, command history was something that was introduced. So a lot of things that we now enjoy for some 40 years later uh, from this, it, um, these were all new, unique things that were brought to the shell. So um, I, I tell you these little things like the fact that uh, command history was introduced with the C shell uh, by Bill Joy because we, uh, the history command is like my life savior uh, uh, for that. Um, Corn Shell uh, was worked on by David Korn uh, in uh, 1983. Um, it's a derivative of the Born Shell um, and looks similar uh, to, to Bash than C Shell. Um, but that also brought us more features uh, in scripting uh, that we found that we now find in things like Ruby and Python, uh, such as associative arrays and, and floating point arithmetic. So, if you were here for Sean's presentation, he was talking about how Bash is just really horrible at math, if, unless you're doing integers. That's true of all the shells um, until you get into like Corn Shell, Ruby, or, or Python. And then Bash, or the Born Again shell, which has been our, our default for our, a long time, was uh, written in 1989 by Brian Fox uh, as part of the uh, Free Software Foundation, uh, or GNU project. Um, and um, uh, with that, um, we saw backwards compatibility uh, to the actual Born shell. So it's kind of a play on things, you know, Born Again, Born, Bash. Uh, so it's the, the Born Again shell. 
uh, for that. Um, acted, added things like history, command line editing, uh, directory stacks, so you could push and pop uh, commands on, uh, on, onto things. Um, and things like environmental variables, command completion, and a little bit more. So uh, with that, Bash has continued to, to evolve. Um, so for, for the Mac OS, we saw TC Shell from 10.0 uh, uh, to 10.2. Um, so, uh, and, and that was uh, true through, through Cheetah in, in, in 2000. Um, and, and we ran this uh, rather through uh, Jaguar, which is 10.2. Um, sorry, cats versus locations in California. I get confused sometimes. Uh, and then with 10.3, uh, we saw Apple default the shell to Bash. Um, I, went, I spent some time in the Wayback Machine trying to find some of the hateful, angry articles about how the world was going to end because Apple was moving to Bash. I remember reading these things. I couldn't find them easily, uh, but I really wanted to put them up here on the screen because the same sort of revolt kind of feels to be happening now. It's like, oh my gosh, the world's going to end. We're moving to Z-Shell. It's not that bad. That's why we're, that's why we're having this talk. So Z Shell was developed by Paul Falstad at Princeton. Um, the name, uh, so just useless, hist useless facts to use for the, the game show for next year. Um, ZSH derives from uh, the name of a Yale professor, Zhang Xiao. Uh, then he was a teaching assistant at uh, Princeton University. Uh, Falstad uh, regarded a Xiao's login, which was ZSH. That would be a good name for a shell. That's how we got Z Shell. Um, ZSH uh, is an extension of the Born shell for that um, and uh, also builds on some of the features of uh, K, K shell or corn shell uh, and TC shell for that. So that brings us back to Apple declaring 16 years later uh, that Bash is, no, is going to be no more and that we're moving to Z shell. The sands are, are, so to, are shifting under our shells, so to speak. So 16 years ago, right? It's time to panic, right? Don't panic yet. Unlike um, Python 2.7, which uh, was signaled by Apple that, that Python, Ruby, and even Perl are eventually to be deprecated, Bash is still included. But the signs are there that, that this is going, going away. Um, so is it ZSH, is it Z shell, is it Z how, how do we pronounce this? In America, I'm thinking Z shell. If you're Canadian, it's Z shell, or European maybe. Um, what are some of the features? Um, I may get into a little bit more detail on all of these, but, but these are the really cool things that, that I think Z shell brings along and makes this shell a lot more efficient and easier to use. Um, we have programmable command line com completion. So much like a lot of our, our integrated development environments where, where it will complete the command out, you get that in a shell environment for that. Um, we get a shared command line history. Uh, how many times have you had multiple terminals open and then you close that terminal and bash overwrites the history uh, of that, that terminal over everything else? Uh, with with Z shell, it actually shares that history. Um, we get uh, extended file globbing, uh, which I'll, I'll get into a little bit more. Uh, better variable and array handling, uh, multi-line command uh, editing, uh, spelling correction uh, for commands, uh, compatibility modes. So we have support for for other languages uh, and other shells. Uh, themable prompts, uh, which you can get a little overboard. I'll show you that in a little bit. Uh, loadable modules, um, uh, the where command, which, uh, which is really cool, uh, and name directories. So let's, let's actually dive into some of these. Uh, again, I'm not talking about writing scripts. I'm talking about the interaction uh, of, of using uh, the, the actual command line. So what's really cool is uh, you have command line completion. Um, so it, you can type uh, something like uh, CD, and give yourself shortcuts. So uh, when, you, when you type this, um, it will actually automatically expand the, the directories for that. 
Um, so if, uh, and the, the screenshot didn't quite come through, but um, that CD slash U slash LO slash B, anybody know what that is? There you go. So that is a lot easier to type, but it also looks like Greek when I put it on the screen like that. Um, the other cool thing is uh, that you, with tab completion, you can type a partial for a command. Um, so this is the CP command, which is uh, copy. Putting a dash in there and hitting the tab key is going to give you a prompt with all of the, your possible options for this. Who is excited about the ability to, to do this uh, for things like, uh, I don't know what's going on in this machine. My apologies. Let's go back to that. Um, uh, uh, rsync, anybody? Anybody remember all the commands for rsync? Yeah, no. Y you can get it prompted to you here. It's spectacular. Um, so here's what rsync looks like, right? This is, a, this is amazing. You're not having to keep an extra shell open. Just look at the man page for rsync to figure out what's going on. Um, so uh, the order of, world, of word expansion, uh, there, there is an order of operations to this. Um, uh, first is tilde, then parameter expansion, command substitution, arithmetic uh, expansion, then path name uh, expansion uh, for that, and then quote removal was always performed last for this. Um, the uh, other uh, cool thing are widgets. Um, these, are, these are functions that are tied to keyboard commands. Um, so you can uh, prepend things like sudo uh, if you're working uh, on something and then just type in a escape s uh, for that. Um, shell history uh, is one of those things that has been a pain point for, for a long time. When you have simultaneous shell uh, sessions going on, a lot of times you close an instance and, and it writes over the history file. You close the second instance, it writes the whole history in. Your history isn't set to be long enough and then it clears out the older history. Um, and then when you're trying to, to search through all of these things, uh, you know, it, 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 it's, just, it's just painful to, to use. So uh, with Z shell, you have a, a command called set op. Uh, set up, uh, uh, the command is set up, set up inc append history means that it will now append the history instead of replace it. Uh, and then set up share history uh, means that it will actually share the history between, between the shells for you. So with this, uh, all of your shells uh, can now append and share all of their history uh, between the shells. So this can be, can be helpful. This also can be a pain, so you can actually uh, disable that by, by just typing the command again for that. So who knows about file globbing? Um, we spend a lot of time in this. You probably have been doing this and don't even know that it's called file globbing. Um, but really, this is a matter of using wildcard expansion. Um, and ZSH takes this to a new level uh, in the ability to to match uh, all sorts of ranges uh, of, of different directories and then taking that automatic expansion with short names and, and being able to, to use that to get to paths to find files uh, and make it even easier. Um, there's a, a whole bunch of uh, different uh, qualifiers in here and, I'm, and this is here because you're getting the slides and this is a resource for you um, because I don't wanna teach you regular expressions, that's not fun. Um, but, but a lot of these uh, will help you uh, do uh, those additional searches. Um, but it's really cool uh, in that you can also search for files based on things like permissions. So you can look at, at the, uh, the permissions uh, and see if the read write executable uh, or executable flag is set for the owner, for world permissions, for group permissions, and give me just those files. So before, you would have to do like an ls-la, pipe that in and do some voodoo with, with grep to, to try and get that list out. You can actually do that file globbing just in, in C shell with the CD command. Um, you can also look at modification times. You can go and search for files in a certain time frame for that, modified within the last week, last couple of hours, and things like that. Um, 
So uh, one of the things that, uh, moving on, uh, one of the things that I, I like to point out here, and we'll get back to this a little bit when we talk about actually scripting, uh, is how word splitting is handled. Um, so in Bash, by default, word splitting is, is always there. And what I'm talking about is, uh, is if I have a variable of foo space bar, in, in Bash, that's considered two words. Um, in Z shell, that is one word for that. Um, by default, Z shell doesn't split that into, into words. Now you have the option to use setup uh, sh word split, basically turns on Bash word splitting. Uh, for that, uh, and, and now uh, things will work here. So if we look at the example here, um, you know, we have uh, these arguments here, uh, the argument of one, two, three. Uh, if we echo that out, uh, we only have one argument. If we turn word splitting on and ask for, for how many args are in there, so I've defined args as a function here, just to echo the, the count there, uh, we now get three. If we set no sh word split, that'll turn that off. Uh, so long and thanks for all the fish. Uh, and we ask for the args, it's back to, to one for that. Um, so uh, you can get around this by uh, evaluating uh, words for that. So this is a little, uh, another option for you instead of turning on and off that. Uh, if you do need that, that word count in there, uh, and that's a way to, to get around that. And you can shorten that down to just the dollar sign uh, curly bracket equals uh, the variable name. Uh, and curly bracket will give you the same thing. So uh, one of the other things here is improved uh, array handling. So uh, you can actually create arrays on, on the fly in Z shell, um, and you can append uh, to them uh, very easily. Uh, and change existing values uh, and value key pairs uh, we, with Z shell. So um, this makes uh, building arrays and, and using uh, arrays uh, a lot easier uh, when, you're, when you're gathering large parts of data that you might need to parse through or loop through uh, for that. So um, there's a couple of different ways to, to access the, the array. Uh, for that, so you can uh, in here we're we're setting uh, my array to one two three four, um, and then if we ask for the number of args for that, we see that there's four. If I want to print just a specific uh, one for that, it's very easy to to just call that out uh, using brackets. Um, you'll notice that if I call it uh, with brackets and put a comma between the two numbers, it's actually going to give me a span. It just doesn't give me those two uh, arguments. Um, and then if I want just the last item in the array, so if you want just the, the last item, you can use a negative one uh, to grab that last item. Um, one thing to note is that indexes start at one and programmers count from zero, right? Uh, so uh, if you don't like that um, and uh, want, want that to actually start at zero, then you can set up uh, KSH arrays that turns on the, the corn uh, shell style arrays, which start at zero, which is everything should start at zero, if you ask me. But uh, my, little, my little band here, I had an extra line and I put on there, programmers count from zero. Um, there are special variables uh, av available to us that make life a little bit easier. These are kind of cool. Um, dollar sign uh, exclamation point will give you uh, or bang, uh, we'll give you the, the process ID of the last backgrounded command. Um, uh, double dollar sign will give you the PID of the current shell that you're in. Um, the uh, dollar sign question mark will give you the exit status returned by the last command. Uh, for that underscore, uh, will give you uh, the last argument of the previous command. Uh, there's a built-in RNG. It's, doesn't go very far. It's only 3,200, uh, 3, uh, zero through that number. Um, so it's a little bit of an RNG, but not really. Um, uh, PWD, the current present working directory, is actually saved as a variable for that. Um, and uh, dollar sign $n was a positional parameter uh, for that. So I have a couple of examples here for you. Uh, that of, of using these. 
uh, and and how you can uh, you know just call these and, and get the current current directories that, that you're in. So these are helpful when you're building out your actual scripts uh, to know where you're at and, and get some of these environmental variables without having to go actually set them and and, and define them uh, yourself. Uh, Multi-line command editing. Uh, this is really cool uh, with the ZLE or the ZSH line editor. Um, so as you're working uh, on on a line, um, uh, once you've run it, uh, you can type Control P, and it'll actually give you all of the code that you just typed back in in a multi-line format. You can use the arrow keys to get back up through there, uh, adjust your code, and and run it again. Uh, for that. So the multi-line editing is really helpful. Uh, in Bash, you get a single line. So you could edit it, but it scrolled to the end, right? And you had to kind of figure out where you were. It uh, wasn't so fun to use. Um, who can type commands in right the first time? Not me. Uh, but spelling correction uh, helps that. So uh, to turn this on is set up correct. Um, you get prompted with uh, uh, NYAE, that stands for no, yes, abort, or edit. Um, I like to change the prompt because I can't remember half the time what NYAE means. Um, so if I mis misspell uh, make directory, uh, ZSH will prompt, uh, did you actually mean make directory NYAE? You type a yes, and it actually runs the command with the proper uh, spelling of it. Uh, same thing with uh, the other example here is remove directory uh, for that. Um, you do have the ability with CSH to emulate other shells. Uh, this is helpful if you're going to Stack Exchange and borrowing other code and don't want to convert it to corn shell or, or not corn shell, shell but Z shell. Um, so you can actually emulate uh, a section of code. Um, and basically pretend to be CSH uh, corn shell, or C shell corn shell, uh, uh, born shell, or, or ZSH uh, itself, and, and basically get back to that. Um, so this, this can be helpful if you've got some other scripts that you, you may want to not convert or, or want to test, but stay in your, your current shell for that. Um, the, big, the big funness uh, with Z shell is themable prompts. Um, so these are just a couple of, of examples uh, of the prompt. The default prompt uh, is percent %n at uh, percent %m uh, space percent %1 tilde uh, and optional uh, um, uh, uh, hashtag. Uh, what these mean is the username, at is actually a literal, the at sign. Uh, the percent %m is the host name. Um, and uh, the percent one will, will substitute uh, the, the tilde for uh, your current home directory, but otherwise will actually pr print the present working directory uh, for that. Um, and then the, the uh, percent uh, hashtag uh, outputs uh, whether or not you're in a privileged shell or not. So if you're running sudo uh, or you're running as root, uh, it'll, it'll alert you to that. Um, the other thing that Z Shell offers is write prompt, uh, which is uh, a lot of fun, I guess, if you want. Uh, so you can actually like put other things like the current time uh, over there. Uh, so you know maybe this is my uh, this is my prompt, uh, J Strong at Confuser. I'm currently in my my uh, my home directory, uh, and I can set the the write prompt uh, to be percent %t, which is time. And now the time will show up uh, over there. And it will just automatically go away uh, if I have a longer command that wraps the, the line for that. So it's kind of a little bit of, of shell display magic uh, for that. Um, the other uh, thing uh, with Z shell is uh, a lot of the components of it are, are built in as modules. So to, to keep down on the memory load uh, of the shell, uh, we've, it's been modulized uh, for that. So each of these modules can be, can be linked and loaded. Uh, you do that with the, the Z uh, mod load command. Um, and you can discover what modules are available to you just by typing Z mod load ZSH slash and then hitting tab. That will d use the autocomplete to show you all of the different uh, modules that are, that are available here for you. Um, uh, where, 
Another thing that's built in is the, the where command, uh, and this can be helpful uh, when you're trying to find uh, exactly where a, a certain command is, is maybe being called from or where a function is, is being called from. Um, essentially, there's another command called whence, uh, and where is a, a whence with a dash F at it, basically is a wrapper. Um, the other thing uh, that I like to use uh, is uh, uh, use this for, uh, if you do the dash uh, F on this, uh, you can, uh, it'll, it'll print out the entire uh, uh, function for you uh, for that. So this can be helpful to figure out just exactly uh, which function is being called and what, what that might, might look for. Um, Zshell also has uh, uh, a functionality called name directories, and this allows you to set up shortcuts uh, to uh, certain directories, um, and you, you, you access this by using the, basically prefacing it with, with the tilde. So um, if I, in, in this example, um, I can set up, uh, maybe I want to link foo to Etsy, uh, doc to documents, and pic to pictures. Uh, so you do that with this hash command here. Uh, so now I can just type tilde foo. Uh, and, and if I do a PWD, you'll see that I'm in, uh, in Etsy, uh, and you'll see that my prompt, because I've set up this name directory, actually shows it to me as tilde foo instead of the actual per present wor working directory. Same thing with documents here uh, and pictures and things like that. Uh, so this just makes it a little bit easier if you're in uh, the same directories all the time. You can set up name directories to make it just a little bit easier to, to switch into those. So um, this leads me into uh, the more customization of, of the shell. And, and one of the, the big things uh, with Z shell is that there's, there's kind of a, a little uh, uh, cult-like following to uh, a couple of themes that are out there. Um, and it's one of those things that I, I swear they, they want to impress you. It's impress your friends day with like how crazy can I make my theme. Um, you can do that. Uh, there's, a, there's a large collection of them with OMIZSH. Um, they collect third-party plugins and, and basically have a GitHub repository with over 1,300 contributions. Uh, there's 250 plugins and 140, uh, I think it's more like uh, closer to 200 themes available uh, for that. It also comes with an auto-update tool, which is kind of cool. So it will keep you up to date as they keep adding uh, more things to, to the oh my ZSH theme. Uh, Antigen is a, a small set of functions that just helps make ZSH a little bit better. Uh, Prez2 is a configuration uh, framework for ZSH that uh, does some of the things that oh my ZSH does. Uh, and then Power Level 9K and Power Level 10K uh, are both themes uh, using the, the power level uh, or power line fonts. Um, they can be vanilla CSA, ZSH uh, or use ZSH frameworks uh, as well, like, such as oh my ZSH, Antigen, or, or Prez2 uh, for that. So just an idea of how many themes are available for oh my ZSH. That's just half of them. That's all I could fit on that scrolling slide for that. Um, what's nice about this is, is it gives you a lot of basics uh, for aliases and, and customization and, and ease uh, for the ZSH theme, but it's also very easy uh, if you're using something like oh my ZSH uh, to add custom aliases. They've actually just done this. Uh, it's built in uh, to, to the functionality of this theme com customization. So all of your aliases uh, can be stored in uh, your, your home directory, tilde uh, dot o my zsh uh, slash custom. You store it as a dot zsh file. So in this example here, um, I'm uh, also showing just some of that I didn't, if you notice here, I didn't type cd, I just typed in dot o my zsh slash custom it automatically assumed I wanted to change directory into that. This is actually a functionality of just ZSH, which is kind of cool. So you can save yourself three characters, CD space. You don't have to type that anymore. Um, here I'm echoing uh, an alias of up. 
which is just cd dot dot, which is change directory uh, up up one, and I'm echoing that into uh, my aliases dot zsh. I source uh, my tilde dot zshrc file, so this is basically asking to asking uh, the shell to to resource all of my preferences for zsh, and now I can type up, and you'll notice that it took me. Uh, up a level to dot o my zsh. Um, for those of you who don't want to switch to Z zsh but like some of this cool functionality, uh, there is uh, bash it, uh, which basically they went and ripped out all of the cool stuff for o my zsh for bash and did it here. So you can have all of this cool hotness for bash if you don't want to switch. Uh, so uh, that's that's there for you. It's called bash it. Um, for that. So um, we've been talking about how ZSH uh, works as an interactive shell. Uh, and the interactive shell is the most direct way of using the shell. Um, and configuring some of these things um, can be a huge boost to productivity, uh, usefulness, and just our sheer inherent laziness of not wanting to type all the things. I like typing a couple of letters and tab completing or not even tab completing and, and just letting the shell do things for me. Um, another equally important aspect of shell is, is running scripts, right? Um, because the whole idea here is that we're gonna write a little bit of code, right? And we're gonna automate the task. The automation takes over forever. I'm sure you guys have seen this XKCD. Uh, over and over again. The reality is is that we just keep doing ongoing development for that and we don't have time for the original thing we wrote the code for. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about, about uh, scripting. Um, so scripts are, are, are uh, will only run on full Mac OS, on a full Mac OS installation. Um, so with that, when we're looking at what languages that we might wanna write our scripts in, um, we've got uh, four, uh, four basic options. Uh, the first is the born shell. Uh, that's not going away uh, anytime soon. It's ubiquitous. Uh, it runs in recovery. It's kind of the lowest common deno denominator. It's also the least featured of all the shells. It's old. 1977. Hasn't had a lot of updates. Um, Bash, uh, Apple has kind of signaled that, you know, it's going to be so long and thanks for all the fish. Uh, on that, um, if you're going to do it, you might want to consider installing your own Bash 5 binary for that. Uh, Python, uh, if you don't know, is going away. I'm pretty sure we've talked about that this week. Um, and if not, it's definitely being heavily discussed on the Mac admin Slack. Um, so you're going to want to install and maintain your own Python 3 uh, binary more than likely for that. Apple has signaled that they are in love with Z Shell. So, uh, for deployment scripts, workflows, launch agents, uh, and launch daemons and things like that on a full-fledged full uh, install of Mac OS, this is a great environment uh, to, to be in. So if anything that you're doing that you plan on running from recovery, you don't want to use uh, Python or ZSH for that. Um, the current binary uh, for Bash uh, is 12 years old. Just FYI, um, so I, I swear the way Apple works uh, is that there's one guy or one person or gal who advocates for any of these projects. Could be Python, could be Bash or whatever, and that person leaves Apple. And then there's nobody to advocate for it and it just sits there and festers until somebody comes along and goes, why is this still here? Let's get rid of it in the next version. It's just a theory. Um, if you plan on running a script from recovery or installer or bootstrapper or MDS workflow or anything like that, you're gonna probably wanna write that uh, in, in born shell or born again shell uh, for that. Um, but again, the most future proof is going to be uh, the born shell uh, for that. Um, but anything else, you should be okay with writing your scripts in, in ZSH. So we're here, right? Shebang, shebang bin bash. And we want to convert our scripts to Z shell. Um, the thing about this is um, it's not that hard. You know, really all you need to do is, is the first step is go into your existing bash script and change your call to, to use the Z shell and then see what fails. Because 
that's, that's the way I like to do it. Um, with that, the things that you're going to run into are very minimal. A lot of it comes down to conditional logic. Uh, some of the if statement logic has changed a little bit from, from Bash to Z Shell. But in, in my testing uh, over the last couple of months uh, of playing with this, uh, I've only had a couple of instances where that logic has needed to be adjusted. If you have good documentation in, and notes in, in your script, it should be pretty easy to, to, to get that logic adjusted and then you're back up and running. But I want to say that, that a good majority of my scripts literally just work just fine uh, in ZSH for that. If you're a Visual Studio Code user, um, this is a, a little guide here on how to set your default uh, shell in, in uh, Visual Studio Code to ZSH. Um, so you just want to find that property uh, for the integrated shell uh, and set it to ZSH uh, for that. So uh, again, converting uh, those bash scripts, most of them are backwards compatible. Uh, remember that arrays start at one and, uh, and the only other thing is that word splitting can be, is handled differently. Uh, so uh, otherwise it should be pretty backwards compatible. Uh, for you. So um, I'm assuming that you understand some of the basics of bash functions. I'm not here to train you on bash and, and how to, how, or ZSH, um, but I, I want to uh, kind of let you know of some of the other uh, functions uh, that are here. Uh, and, and one of them is the anonymous function. Um, and that is that you can actually call a function that doesn't have uh, uh, a declared uh, action on that. That that anonymous function will run uh, regardless, um, and use a subshell to store uh, its value. So it's possible to to basically have things execute uh, without ever having called them. So a lot of times you would have set up maybe a main function and then called that later on. And once you've loaded all of your functions, this basically replaces that and and is automated uh, for you. Um, this is just for S and G's. Uh, when you get the slides, copy this in here and hit go because you get this. I'm sorry, sorry, just had to throw that in there. Um, user input uh, changes uh, a lot uh, with CSH. So um, in Bash, uh, you had uh, the input method here, um, and uh, in CSH. Um, you have to use uh, uh, varied, uh, the varied call to get that input. Uh, and what that actually is doing is allowing you to edit a live variable. Um, so this is kind of cool because if you call that same variable again, it will put the current value of that variable out in front of the user and let them edit that value. So you actually gain some, some functionality. Uh, for this for user input on a script. So if you have something where you're asking the user questions, this can be helpful for that. So kind of wrapping uh, things up here, uh, talked about uh, you know, what kind of inspired me uh, and, and, and now Apple is kind of is starting to force us into uh, ZSH, a little history uh, of the shell, um, some highlights of Z shell. Um, I don't want you to be, be scared of this, um, but switching, uh, switching your shells isn't going to be that difficult. Moving your scripts over, I don't feel, is going to be too terribly difficult for you. Your mileage may vary. This is no warranty. Do not come and see me with your, your, shell, your scripts. If you've changed them and they're not working, that's not my job. Go, to, go somewhere. No, I'm kidding. But I will, I'll, I'm happy to talk to you about it and see if we can't figure out the logic, but don't hold, I'm, hold me harmless. Uh, for that. Now, if you want to stick with Bash and you are tired of the, this notice right here, right? The default interactive shell is now ZSH, blah, 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 Apple. Um, export Bash silence deprecation warning equals one. We'll shut that off. Thank you, Apple. We know, but you can shut that off. So with that, uh, I'm Jack Daniel Strong, JD Strong. Uh, I'm on the Twitter as at uh, Spokane Mac and uh, Mac admin Slack as at Jack Daniel and I think we've got uh, probably about five minutes for, for questions if anybody has any questions on that. And Derek's, Derek's running mics. Bash has a bunch of um, string manipulation stuff in it with some unusual syntax but it works. Does 
is ZHS, ZSH compatible with that or does it have its own stuff for that? It, it's compatible and builds upon that. So I didn't, I didn't want to get too detailed into that because that's not something you would use in an interactive shell as much. Um, but you see a little bit of that with the file globbing and file name globbing. Um, so it has uh, a lot of that and, and builds upon that. So it should be backwards compatible. It was designed to be backwards compatible with that. I, I want to move over to ZSH, but I, my problem is I often have to sit down in front of a test machine. Is there some command I can use to set the terminal window temporarily on a test machine, machine into ZSH so I don't have to switch back and forth between bash and ZSH? Just type uh, ZSH. And then everything you, for more uh, than on you are, ZSH. If you just type ZSH, you are in, in Z shell. Awesome. If you type in bash, you are in, in born again shell. Right, you made my day. I like easy questions. Bruh, me too. <laughs> we don't get a lot of them in this, uh, this, this day. So is everybody gonna, gonna move to ZSH? All right, so. If not, Apple's moving you to ZSH, and they're probably gonna do it on a 0 .4 or 0 .5 release, so good luck. All right, with that, thanks guys.